My name is Mark Gentrop at WJ Communications. I'm a packaging and product engineer. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the soldering on a QFN style package such as the AP6012 and 3 family devices are, are packaged in. Here we have a cross-section view of what the inside of a DFN QFN style package looks like. This is also known as a leadless package. That means the lead or the pin is actually inside the mold compound. So this is the mold compound, this is the pin cross section, the heat sink inside, the die mounted to the heat sink, and the bond wire that goes from the die to the pin. This pin is inside the mold compound. Compare that to an SOIC8, where here there's a die, bond wire goes to the lead, and the lead protrudes external to the body. So here, when you apply soldering iron heat, it's probably okay, because soldering iron heat dissipates quite rapidly by the time it gets to where the bond wire connects. In this case, if you apply soldering iron heat, we don't recommend that because if that soldering iron heat is directly on that pin, the pin is in direct contact to the mold compound and the soldering iron heat is transferred directly. Recommended 260 degrees C max because this is a surface mount part, a no lead style surface mount, in which 260 is where the reflow occurs. So if you try to apply soldering iron heat there, that will go above the 260 degrees C limit. Around that temperature, we start to get very rubbery and delamination can occur on that surface. And if that surface delaminates, air will appear between there, this small compound will separate, pulling the bond wire from the, the lead and your package goes open. So again, we do not recommend soldering with the soldering iron. Here, okay. Here, no. Okay, and now we'll talk about some of the surface mount soldering techniques to use on the DFN package. So, like we said before, it's an SMT style package. No soldering irons on the device. And whether the soldering iron is placed on the lead of the device, the bottom of the device for pre-tinning, no soldering irons on the device. That iron can be between 400 and 800 degrees C. And remember, it's in direct contact to the bond wires and the die that are inside that package. So that heat will be immediately transferred into the package. That's not a good situation and not recommended. So we do recommend a couple methods of reflow. One is using a hot air gun, and that's a standard SMT technique if A, you use a preheat plate somewhere around 125 degrees C. The purpose of that is to bring the temperature of the PCB to a point that when you use the hot air gun to remove the device, you've got a small temperature excursion to get the reflow. So you don't have to have hot air blowing on the device for a long period of time. So preheat the plate at 125 degrees C. Then the hot air from the hot air device or gun should be right about 300 degrees C. A little bit hotter than the 260, but when you put that heat on there, it will reflow the, the solder. When the reflow happens, you pull the device off immediately. Then you know you're not going to get well beyond the 260 degrees C maximum temperature. You should always be cognizant 260 degrees C is the max that that device should see. Number three, we can use a hot plate uh, to do reflow. In this case, the hot plate would be set at 325 degrees C. And in a demonstration just after this, we'll show where we take a small aluminum block about the size of the device. And that aluminum block will go on the hot plate. And then the PCB goes on that aluminum block so that the device that you're removing is centered above there. Heat will transmit from the hot plate through the block up to the bottom side of the device until the solder reflows and you can pull the component off. So the only other contingency is that after the solder melts, you don't leave the board sit on that hot plate for a long period of time. About 60 seconds is okay. Uh, beyond that, the PCB and uh, may start to degrade, you may get adhesion issues with traces and maybe other components will reflow. So now that we've kind of given you some insight here on soldering techniques, we'll show you how the hot plate method works in the pictorial that follows. This is the application board mounted to a heat sink. You guys, as you receive a part from WJ Communications as a sample, this is what the part will look like, you probably recognize already. We're going to show a demonstration on how the AP60X amplifier, that part right there, 
is removed from the board uh, by use of a hot plate. So I'm going to remove first this heat sink from the board in order to ensure that I don't reflow anything on the board except for the device itself. This is the heat sink that's now been removed from the PWB. Now you can see on the back side of the PWB there's still residual uh, heat sink compound that was placed there to help remove heat from the back side of the board during operation. That will have to be removed from the back side of the board before we place this onto the hot plate. Now when we put it on the hot plate, we're going to use a small aluminum block. The purpose of this block is so that we can center the board over the top of the block and the heat then only goes to the back side of the PWB to the surface of the board where the component is and we don't reflow the other components on the surface of the board. This is the hot plate. The hot plate temperature is set to 320 degrees C. You don't want to go too much above that because at that temperature you'll get a very nice reflow minimizing any possible solder voids that will be uh, forming under the part. The hot plate is set to 320 degrees C. The block has been placed on the hot plate. We're going to now place the PWB so that the device is centered over the top of that block. And in that way, remember, the heat will come only under the component and we won't reflow the rest of the parts on the board. After about 30 seconds, the solder will start to reflow. Put a little bit of pressure on the board to hold it down. Grab the part and pull it off the board. Now that the part's been removed from the board, we're going to use solder wick to remove excess solder from the solder lands where the part was mounted. So with the soldering iron, Place the solder wick over the traces and remove the excess solder only from the solder lands. The solder that's still within the main ground plane area can stay, that's okay. Now we'll add solder to the solder lands. Usually an easy way to do this is to take a small piece of solder wire and just lay it across the board on the solder land. one piece of wire for each side. There. Now I place the PWB back on top of the heater block. And we'll wait a few seconds for the solder to flow again. You can already see it flowing in the main area of the heat sink. While that solder is reflowing, uh, so it flowed along the pads, add a little bit more solder here just to cover the vias. Now I'll place a little bit of flux on the part. Liquid flux. Turn the part upside down so that the back side has got a light coating of flux on the surface. Now the part's been reflowed, so the solder is now molten. The part has had flux added to the back side, a light coating over the surface, and you can now place the component directly over the top of the solder area. Gently move the component so that it's centered on top of the pads, and put a light pressure on top, and you're soldered in place.